A new meteor shower in the night sky, uh, thanks to a comet. Uh, there, the Earth is going to see a, a shooting star display. It's first from Comet 209P uh, slash Linear. That's, a, that's an mouthful's name, but to explain the event with us is uh, uh, Carl Hergenrother, uh, a, an astronomer at uh, University of Astronomy or of Arizona uh, with NASA's OSIRIS-REx mission. Carl, thanks for, uh, for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Well, tell us, tell us I guess, to start uh, a bit about this, this comet and this meteor shower we're going to see. Why is it the first time the Earth and, and stargazers all around uh, in the, the visibility world will get a chance to see it? Well, you know, most meteor showers are a result of comets. As they go around the sun, they release dust, and they leave behind trails. Uh, for this particular meteor shower, it's the result of a recently discovered comet, 209P Linear, which was first seen in 2004. It goes around the sun roughly once every five years, so it's what we call a short period or Jupiter family comet. And it seems like every time it's gone around the sun, it's left a trail. And it just so happens that this weekend, the Earth is actually going to encounter a whole number of trails, dust trails from this comet, going back to the late 1700s up to about 1979. And you know, you've been tracking the, t the comet kind of as, it's, as we've near neared this point. What, is, what have you seen? Has, is there an uptick in activity? Uh, what, what will we learn from the comet? By watching the meteor shower. Yeah, well, the first time I imaged the comet was back in September, September of last year. And um, one thing kind of noticed right off the bat was that the comet wasn't active. So it allowed me in the months of February and March to not only observe the comet, but actually to m make real good measurements of the nucleus. We know it's roughly one to three miles across. We know it rotates once either 11 or 22 hours. There's a little bit of ambiguity there. It's a very red object, which is typical of Jupiter family comets. And it does look like it didn't turn on until about a month or so before perihelion, and perihelion was in early May. And in fact, the video you just saw was taken only three days after perihelion. And for a comet that's about 0.96 AU or so from the sun, that's not a lot of activity. So what we think is that this is a fairly old comet. It's been around the sun a long time and maybe well on its way to being a dead, burnt out comet. Now, I had heard that based on what, uh, what astronomers see from the meteor shower's debut, uh, they can learn kind of what the comet was like hundreds of years ago. And I was wondering if you could explain that a little bit more to us. How is it uh, like a cosmic time machine? Well, in a way, it's almost like, you know, a, a crime scene investigation where you do forensics. Every time the comet goes around the sun, it's basically leaving, you know, a trail of breadcrumbs behind saying, I was here. And so what we plan on doing this uh, with this meteor shower tonight is depending on the rates that we see, how many meteors we see, what part of the sky we came for, it came from, you can kind of get a good indication of how active this comet was in the past, if active at all, which we don't know because we've only been observing it since 2004. How, how do, um, I guess, how does your you know, tracking the comet uh, you know, relate to the work that you're doing with OSIRIS-REx? I know that they're both space rocks, they're both orbiting the sun. Uh, what, uh, what can you learn from one that helps you prepare for the other? Well, it wasn't too long ago when, where comets were comets and asteroids were asteroids, and they were very different bodies. We now realize that there's really a continuum where you've got very icy rich comets on one side and very dry asteroids on the, in the, on the other side, and in the middle you've kind of just got a continuum. And so we have actually now have what looks like comets, or they look like they're on a cometary orbit, but they behave like asteroids, which means they're run out of ices. And on the other hand, we've got asteroids now in the main belt that are acting like comets. They call them main belt comets, which means, yes, they were asteroids, they formed close to the sun, but they still had enough significant volatiles or ices on their surface that every once in a while they act like comets. So. There is some uh, fuzziness now between what exactly is a comet and what exactly is an asteroid. I have to ask you one more question about mm -hmm. this, uh, this, the comet's you know, meteor shower. I've heard it described as uh, the camel of, I guess it's a hard word for me to say. The camel of <laughs> part of it. that's going to come out of it. Can you kind of give us a good primer on how to say the name of that, that camel, uh, camel of part dollars, I think is how, how it is. Um, and, and where folks should look. Yeah, well, um, the meteor showers are named after the constellation that they appear to radiate from. That's why the Perseids in August, they come from the constellation Perseus, or they appear to come from Perseus, and that's why they're called the Perseids. The Camelopardalids come from a very faint constellation that I think was only created back in the 16th century called Camelopardalis. 
And that's actually Latin for giraffe. It sounds like it should be camel, but it turns out I think it actually means spotted camel, which is, I guess, what in the old Latin they would have called a giraffe. And for the best time to look, um, even though the radiant is going to be almost due north, it'll be a little bit to the side of the uh, Polaris, the North Star, you can actually see meteors anywhere in the sky. You don't have to necessarily look at the north. And I would suggest, if possible, just look straight up. And uh, the Perseids, the Leonids, uh, they come every year. Uh, mm -hmm. I've heard some talk, though, that this one may not be the case. It may not come next year. It could be a while before we see it again. I'm just curious why that might be. Well, it's interesting because um, in the past few months, there have been a, a number of uh, papers published by different groups, including one in California, one in Alabama, one in Croatia, that have gone back through their, uh, their video meteor data. And they've actually found evidence of meteors from this comet throughout April, May, and June. So that does suggest that this meteor shower has been around and may have been around for a long time. Really what this particular meteor shower tonight is more akin to is, if you remember the Leonids, where every year you see the Leonids, but for a few years when Comet Temple Tuttle comes back, we hit these dust trails head on, and as a result, you end up seeing you know, thousands or tens of thousands of meteors per hour. That's what's going on now. The rates won't be as high because it's a much lower active comet, but instead of just grazing the outskirts of the, uh, the meteor field or dust field this comet's created, we're hitting these individual dust trails and slicing right through them. Great. Well, I, I think I'm just about out of time. Very excited. This, this comet uh, uh, 209P uh, linear and its meteor shower. Uh, Carl, thanks so much for giving us a, a primer on what to look forward to and all the best with the Cyrus Rex. Thank you. Com.